Understanding the structure and function of the skeleton is fundamental to the task of treating patients with musculoskeletal disorders. Clinical, radiological, and pathological correlation is a powerful learning tool that hopefully will help the clinician to master this material. This video series on osteogenesis recapitulates original work prepared by Lent Johnson and Don Sweet, including photomicrographs from the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology Collection. We posthumously honor both consummate educators whose educational model for teaching orthopedic pathology has been replicated in part in the COA basic science course. The discipline of cell biology has transformed the understanding of the musculoskeletal system. Genetic and molecular mechanisms explain events at a subcellular level and will be referred to throughout. Consider reviewing these videos on bone biology underwritten by Amgen, a biotechnology company. These videos dynamically animate bone at all levels, linking the intracellular relationships of receptors and osteogenic markers to structure, gross and microscopic. They provide context for the videos that follow, in which morphology, both normal and pathological, is reflected in the radiograph and the photomicrograph. The skeleton is a complex organ system, analogous to the brain, consisting of an astonishing 46 billion cells buried in inorganic matrix of 1.7 liters that is tunneled by an intricate lacuno-canalicular system containing a dendritic network with 23 trillion connections. It is a composite that changes constantly throughout life. The skeleton undergoes phases of growth and development till age 20, when bone mass accrues. Maintenance from 20 to 40, where skeletal formation and deletion are balanced, and then after age 40, attrition, where a deletion of structure predominates. Superimposed on this normal evolution, the listed disease processes occur, vascular, infectious, traumatic, anomalous or congenital, metabolic, inflammatory immune, and neoplastic neuropathic, spelling the word vitamin. Bone tissue of the skeleton is a mix of inorganic substances, primarily collagen-1 and calcium hydroxyapatite, and living cells, osteocytes, and can respond to disease only through normal homeostatic mechanisms. The abnormal represents some manifestation of the normal. Bone forms in the embryo by osteoblasts on a pre-existing mesenchymal tissue framework. Either collagen, leading to intramembranous or woven bone, or calcified cartilage, forming enchondral bone. Once bone has formed, the pre-existing bone itself acts as a framework on which remodeling occurs. This bone is termed lamellar bone. The skull, facial bones, and clavicle arise on a collagen template from osteoblasts that begin as uncommitted mesenchymal cells under the tissue-specific transcription factors CBFA1, RUNX2, and Osterix develop the intracellular machinery for making collagen, becoming pre-osteoblasts. The slide shows a sea of cells of various shapes, with dark-stained nuclei and dollops of red-stained extracellular material that has been circled. Focusing, one sees circled, slender, mesenchymal stem cells, termed spindled, which once committed to bone formation, proceed in stages, first becoming pre-osteoblasts. These are the plumper cells surrounding the stem cells on the right. As they elaborate adjacent osteoid, they are now osteoblasts, and several are marked on the left. Within weeks, the previous slide would evolve to woven bone, which has this appearance, half trabecular bone and half open, highly cellular spaces. The bone has many osteocytes, the collagen is randomly oriented. The open areas are termed fibrovascular as they are populated by proliferating cells making vessels, circled and containing the red blood cells. Spindle cells adjacent to vessels, pericytes, subsequently become plump preosteoblasts moving to the bone surface where, as osteoblasts, they deposit the collagen willy-nilly. Genetic faults in the RUNX2 osteogenic marker block normal bone formation at this level. Such genetic defects are responsible for cladocranial dysostosis. 
while woven bone in the fetus and child forms the initial cortex of all bones, it is always pathologic in the adult. Rapid bone loss, as in stress reaction or fracture, acute infection, or rapidly growing tumor induces woven bone in response. Gold stars appearing in these videos indicate clinically important concepts. The radiograph shows a clinical example, a multilamellated periosteal reaction in response to tumor. The specimen shows medullary replacement by tumor and three woven bone lamellae produced by the cambium layer of the periosteum. The majority of the skeleton forms on cartilage models that arise from mesenchymal progenitors. Cartilage goes through a maturation process to be described in detail later, leading to bone growing in length. Ultimately, cartilage cells die, leaving behind a calcified cartilage framework, identifiable on H and E as irregular, dark blue stained matrix on which osteoblasts depose dollops of pink staining globular bone a term that implies a bone applique, forming a smooth bone surface on which woven bone is then applied. Each of these zones of blue calcified cartilage surrounded by globular bone is termed a primary trabeculum. The adult skeleton shown on the left is 100% lamellar bone that has been deposed through the processes of bone modeling and remodeling. The resulting bone takes much longer to apply but is much stronger more bone arranged in a cable-like array. The bone is deposed in layers on pre-existing bone, like the individual layers in a sheet of plywood, each layer oriented at 90 degrees to its neighbor. On the right is a clinical example, biopsy of a young soldier who, who resisted the pain of recruit training and over months developed a stress fracture in response to the acute overuse. This h &E slide shows a cross-section of cortical bone. Rather than the expected solid structure, the cortex is also 50% space that is filled with fibrovascular stroma, the marrow response to repetitive load. The morphology is similar to what you saw previously in woven bone formation. At this power, simply many cells of varying shapes and sizes. Some are giant cells. The cortex is lamellar bone, 98% pink osteoid, 2% lacunae containing osteocytes. Wave after wave of osteoclasts have deleted 50% of the composite. The borders are very irregular, reflecting clast activity. There are at least 11, confirming massive bone deletion. Osteoblasts. The row of large, dark-stained cells predominantly line the borders, elaborating the pink-stained adjacent matrix, new osteoid not yet mineralized. This mass of cells is once again a fibrovascular stroma, a blastema, the cellular engine for making bone. The vessels are marked by numerous red blood cells in small capillaries and larger spaces, sinusoidal vessels whose thin, permeable walls are the ideal circulatory environment for bone formation. Bone is a constantly changing organ in terms of time, place, and quantity. Change is reflected in the radiograph as a shift in bone density, and in the simplest terms, reflects a balance between more and less, as affected by the osteoblast and osteoclast, shown on the left and right respectively. There is a dynamic interplay between mechanical, circulatory, and metabolic factors that explains such shifts. The mechanical effect is predominant, codified in Wolf's Law, stating that bone is created where needed and deleted where not necessary. These vectors act through cytokines, whose complexity is demonstrated by microarray techniques. Bone formation and deletion is by the osteoblast and clast, respectively. The structure, function, and clinical relevance of these cells, as well as the osteocyte, are covered in videos in the COA Basic Science Course YouTube channel. We have already discussed the formation and function of osteoblasts, from the mesenchymal stem cell precursor to pre-osteoblast, which moves to the osteoid seam, there to function as an osteoblast making bone. In this location, nine out of 10 osteoblasts undergo apoptosis and death. One becomes an osteocyte, 
through an unknown selection mechanism, which then goes on through further stages, incorporating in bone as a mature osteocyte. Bone removal is more complex, either chemical or cellular, by the osteoclast. The activated clast polarizes, altering its internal cytoskeleton, moves to the prepared bone surface, and creates a resorption vacuole, circumferentially sealed to the bone, isolating the space between the bone and the clast for bone removal. A ruffled border increases the surface area, allows a highly acidic resorption space to be created. The mineral dissolves, exposing the organic components for enzymatic proteolysis. The products are processed and released to the extracellular space. The cell undergoes apoptosis after one to two days. The divot created is called a Hauship's lacuna. An osteoclast, packed with mitochondria for energy, deletes three times its cell volume over its short life. It takes fully three months and 100 to 150 osteoblasts to fill in that defect. This disconnect between deletion, which takes days, and refill, which takes months, is responsible for the pathophysiology of stress reactions and fractures. So efficient are osteoclasts that a limb never recovers the bone lost after months of immobilization. Oncosis is ischemic cell death, which is accompanied by chemical dissolution of the surrounding bone surface, enlarging the lacuna. There is also ongoing mineral exchange from free surfaces of bone around each cell, cellular process, vessel canals, trabecular surfaces, and the endosteum. These surfaces combined make up an area of more than 1,200 square meters, providing a pool of mineral and hydrogen ions acting as a 72-hour resource for acid-base metabolism. No true deletion of structure is involved, but rather a give and take of ions of calcium, phosphate, and hydrogen. The lacunar canalicular system is demonstrated in this illustration of adult bone, as well as the organization of the circular lamellae and the contained osteons. Successive slices start at A, showing in increasing detail its organization into outer circumferential layers like the rings of a tree, surrounding inner secondary osteons, the core mechanical unit. Wolf's law is physically expressed by the bone remodeling unit, a two-phased process wherein clasts excavate a cavity in weeks that is filled in by blasts laying down bone in sequential lamellae over three months. This to be discussed in videos that follow on the formation of the adult skeleton. You can observe myriad canaliculi linking the lacunae where the osteocytes reside. The osteon is nature's best fit for a system that creates a very strong, yet flexible, cable-like structure that correlates perfectly with the activity pattern of the individual. The Amgen videos link motion to the incredible complexity of this organ system. The osteocyte in its lacuna makes it all happen. Dendrites, cellular processes, communicate with other cells via gap junctions, each entering a channel called a canaliculus. The array of canals is termed lacunocanalicular. On the right, removal of the mineral chemically demonstrates two osteocytes, stellate cells from which dendrites extend, channeled through this network to link to neighbors, surface cells, vessels, and even the marrow. Osteocytes represent 95% of bone cells, live for decades, and are responsible for multiple tasks. A mechanosensor cell that coordinates adaptive responses to the skeleton to mechanical loading. A regulator of bone remodeling through control of osteoblasts and osteoclasts. An endocrine cell sending hormones to other body systems and signaling markers locally. A regulator of calcium, phosphate, and acid-base metabolism. The basic concepts discussed include the types of bone formation, the structure and function of the osteoblast, osteoclast, and osteocyte. We have learned that bone is an amazingly complex organ system that follows a life cycle of growth, maintenance, and attrition. Our overall objective is to understand how this all happens through analysis of the H&E slide linked to the radiograph. The next step is the actual development of the skeleton. 
in this six-and-a-half-week embryo, osteogenesis is about to begin. Until now, the mesenchyme has undergone preliminary condensation of cells in the head, facial bones, and clavicle, from which bones arise from collagen models. In the rest of the skeleton, the condensing cells will become chondroblasts and form cartilage models. The diagram shows what comes next in a long bone. The action unfolds in and around the cartilage models, which grow significantly, interstitially by chondroblast proliferation and secretion, as well as by appositional addition of cells from the perichondrium. The proliferating cells on each end eventually impact on the neighbor. The cells in between, under pressure, flatten out and form an interzone that will become the joint. Individual cartilage cells follow a life cycle to be described, ending centrally in the cartilage model in chondrocyte death and matrix calcification. Maturation completes centrally and then later on at either epiphyseal end. The central calcified cartilage cores can be seen radiographically and are termed the primary center of ossification. What we have discussed is listed. The video sequence suggested next is osteogenesis 2, circulation and Wolf's Law, and osteogenesis 3, development of a long bone. The goal is a comprehensive understanding of the skeleton. And why not find a four-leaf clover in this particular group?